there's a possibility that he just doesn't want to debate her because he's scared. I think that's definitely a possibility. The other possibility, and let me just throw it out there. Let me know what you guys think about it. He can't stand when he's not the center of attention. He tends to dominate the news cycle during elections, okay? And that's not happening right now. It went from everyone focusing on the assassination attempt, wall to wall coverage of that, to now suddenly, I mean, it feels like the assassination attempt happened years ago. That's how quickly this news cycle is moving. And all the attention, especially over this last week, has been focused on Kamala Harris. And it's mostly been positive media attention, a lot of negative, a lot of critique toward Republicans over how they're fumbling right now. Anna Kasparian is tearing the left apart once again, as you probably have heard. Everybody is saying that Donald Trump is terrified to debate Kamala Harris and that he would never sit down with her and, and actually debate her. They said the same thing about Joe Biden, and then he ended up you know, going on that debate. And he didn't really have to debate anything. He was kind of just standing there and talking like a normal human, whereas the person next to him couldn't complete a sentence, a singular sentence. So it looked like he won the debate, even though it wasn't really a debate because one side is not coherent. Anyway, let's get into this clip here on the Young Turks of Anna Kasparian once again, tearing apart the left for saying that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump should debate, but that Donald Trump is scared to debate Kamala Harris. Let's get into this video here of Anna Kasparian tearing the left apart. Harris right off the bat, as soon as it became pretty clear she's the presumptive Democratic nominee, goes out there, she's again confident, she's strong, she's youthful, <laughs> you know, something that now Trump is not. You don't have someone older than Trump in the race now. And so there's a possibility that he just doesn't want to debate her because he's scared. I think that's definitely a possibility. The other possibility, and let me just throw it out there, let me know what you guys think about it. He can't stand when he's not the center of attention. He tends to dominate the news cycle during elections, okay? And that's not happening right now. It went from everyone focusing on the assassination attempt, wall to wall coverage of that, to now suddenly, I mean, it feels like the assassination attempt happened years ago. That's how quickly this news cycle is moving. And all the attention, especially over this last week, has been focused on Kamala Harris. And it's mostly been positive media attention, a lot of negative, a lot of critique toward Republicans over how they're fumbling right now. They, they very clearly were caught flat footed by Kamala being the presumptive nominee. And so their response has been nothing but gross misogynistic statements that's even turning off conservative female voters. And so I think that he's attempting to get back into the news cycle, even if he's kind of taking a risk here by appearing incredibly weak and pathetic. So I think that there is a possibility he's just trying to make headlines right now. But what do you guys think? I think both of those are true. I think, and, I, and that's a wonderful point, uh, especially about the, the second. I, let me know what you think in the comments. I don't think either of those things are true. I don't think he's scared of Kamala Harris. I don't think, well, he probably does want to be the center of attention. He's Donald Trump. But I don't think that's why he's choosing to not debate Kamala Harris. I don't think there's much he can gain out of debating Kamala Harris. And we kind of saw that with the Joe Biden thing. It's like, there's leftist. The only thing that changed with the Biden versus Trump debate is that certain leftists called for Joe Biden to step down so that they could feel better about their Democrat vote. It's not like Democrats went and said that they're going to vote for Donald Trump. That didn't happen. And maybe it happened in very small cases, but the exception doesn't make the rule. Most people are not going to flip their votes right now because of a debate. That's just not, it's, it, people don't care about policy. So whenever they hear them talk about policy, it doesn't matter. It's who has the better zingers and most people already have their mind made up right now. So. Donald Trump is not going to gain anything from debating Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris hasn't even come out and, and had a strong policy position. Like she hasn't said, this is what I'm standing on for this next election. This is what I'm going to accomplish. She doesn't have a Trump build the wall type policy. She doesn't have that. The only thing that she's come out and said is like no tax on tips. And that's something that Donald Trump has, has said before, like a year ago, he said that. So there's not much to debate on right now if you're Donald Trump. You can't prep for Kamala Harris because she hasn't said that she, like specific things that she wants to do. With Joe Biden, he has a whole presidency that you can attack. And he did that and it didn't help him. It, the only thing that happened was, like I said, certain leftists who were living in denial that Joe Biden does have the brain capacity for another term. They woke up and they said, oh, we have to get another 
person to be the Democratic nominee so that we feel better about our Democratic vote. Nobody switched to Republican off that. So I don't I don't see like what's the what motivation does Donald Trump have to debate Kamala Harris? And also, if you if you dis, discard the polling, which I think is a good idea because polling doesn't really mean much nowadays, discard the polling. Donald Trump is a much, much bigger name than Kamala Harris is, you know, so. Trump even getting on stage with Kamala Harris is just going to give her oxygen. It's just going to give her more eyeballs where I don't I just don't I don't think it's a good idea. Personally, I don't think Trump is scared of literally anybody. The guy took a bullet and then stood back up and started fist pumping and said, fight, fight, fight. Like, I know that it was a it was a marketing move and a genius one at that. But also, I have a very I have a marketing mind as well. And there's zero chance that if I see a bullet fly past me whether it hits me or not, am I getting back up and saying, fight, fight, fight. I don't care if I'm surrounded by secret service members or not. I'm getting the hell out of there, you know? So I don't think he's scared of anybody, but I also don't think it's a good idea for him to debate, to debate Kamala Harris. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Point you make, because we already know Trump, Trump is afraid of anyone that's going to make him look bad. He he understands that Joe Biden is not Kamala Harris and he's not prepared to stand on stage with a prosecutor who is going to keep reminding the world that she prosecuted people like Trump all the time for rape, for uh, extortion, extorting banks, etc. I, I also think that he is absolutely pissed that he is not the center of attention right now. It's it's what's making him so angry right now. And I, I know that for a fact, that's why I think it's beautiful that you said in the beginning of the show that she must continue to take shots at him because it's under his skin so much that it's gonna continue to make him show up in manners where he just say things like uh, basically the Negro black president who didn't have a birth certificate does not like the Negro black woman running for president. So I think, I mean, like it's just gonna get worse and worse. So I, I think needling at Donald Trump is way better than uh, debating Donald Trump. So I, I, I'm glad he backed out of this election. It's, it's bad for him, but it's great for, it's great for what's gonna happen to his ego behind that. Yeah, I, I like the possibility of outing Trump. Like he just wants, the attention back. He wants a news cycle about him. And this is a, a surefire way to do that and get some press coverage. But I think the longer he holds out, it will start to affect him in the polls. Uh, they're going to be able to hit him on it at the DNC next month. People are going to talk about it. He's going to be, he's already being framed as a coward. And I think that's where I'm leaning. I'm leaning more to the, the coward camp because she can finish a sentence. We talked about this the other night, Jenk and I, people missed, I think, if you enjoy content like this, to make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. Because Biden was so bad, he had a ter Trump had a terrible debate too. He was rambling, yeah. he was nonsensical, but just by comparison, he looked good. That's why everyone thought he won. But when you're got the bar is below ground, of course, anybody can look good. And on that point, it has been driving me nuts. For the past few days, I'm so curious what you what you both make of this. All of these Dem Party loyalists who for months were insisting Joe Biden is the only person who can beat Donald Trump. How dare you suggest he drop out? And now all of a sudden, like we see Trump doesn't want to debate somebody who can finish a sentence. You see a shift in the polls, you see a wave of energy. And now all of these same people are thrusting themselves forward. I got it. I know who needs to be. Vice President, it's Pete Buttigieg or, or whatever <laughs> centrist. Mo it's like the same people who are making awful suggestions for VP and are acting like they know the way. When two weeks ago they're telling us that Biden was fine. Give me a break. Yeah, those people are the worst of the Democratic Party, and I think have contributed significantly to the decline of the Democratic Party. Okay, these people should be banished, and no one should take any of their like any of their advice or opinion seriously, they should be mocked relentlessly, okay? Because remember what they did, okay? It wasn't just that they were gaslighting the American people and Democratic voters by claiming after that horrendous debate that Joe, no, there's nothing wrong with Joe Biden, dynamo behind the scenes. He's the only one who could beat Donald Trump. Like anyone who pushed back against that because you know they have eyes and ears and they saw what they saw during that debate, was smeared as a Trump supporter. In fact, some of those people are watching the show right now. I don't know if they're members, this is members only. But yeah, you, are we Trump supporters for wanting the best possible candidate to run against Donald Trump? And by the way, look, I know that there wasn't an open convention, 
So I don't know if we have the best possible candidate. But what I do know is that Kamala Harris is a million times better at basically communicating a message and giving this impression that she's a strong and competent person who could lead the country. I will say that it's probably it probably is like in the Democratic Party's best interest that they didn't have a convention. They did. They, there was no real choice. Like everybody was just, you know, they, they just got Kamala Harris just thrown on them and said, this is your candidate now. And everybody's just like, all right, that's probably in their best interest. It's kind of like exactly what happened with Joe Biden, where one day everybody just kind of got a call and they said, all right, everybody drop out and support Joe Biden. And everybody just kind of fell in line and did it. It's probably the best move for the Democratic Party, because if that wasn't the case, then there would be a lot of infighting and not much unification around a certain candidate, around a specific candidate. Now we have just everybody astroturfing this Kamala Harris campaign and a lot of people falling in line. A lot of people are sheep, so they're going to fall in line and it's working out for them. We're seeing a lot of momentum. Yeah, it's fake momentum to start, but that creates real momentum because of the sheeps falling in line behind the fake momentum. So it's working out so far and for the Democrats. I don't know. It's it's shaping up to be a very interesting election. It's pretty scary, in my opinion, because I think Kamala has a real chance to beat Trump. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking. But yeah, Anna Kasparian, once again, calling out the left for being the left, being very wishy-washy, just being liars and, and a bunch of idiots. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this whole Anna Kasparian versus the left situation.